Okay, so I'm talking about the first 24 hours before I had my first daughter, Madison, who is now 10. What was I doing? Oh my gosh. Okay, so basically she was a week and a half late and nothing I could do could get this baby to come out. Plus the fact that we think she turned, we weren't sure of her position, but I was determined that I was going to have this baby during those 24 hours because I had her a week, a week and a half late and I was just, I was done. We went on a hike. We baked cookies. We did exercise. We talked to each other. We were stretching. And like there was no movement, nothing. I was so nervous. I was like, I need this baby out of me. I need my body back. So we're still waiting. Nothing's happening. We're lying down. I go, honey, we're just going to have to do it. I mean, I didn't want to have sex, but you know, they say if you have to, if you're trying to, you know, induce labor, what do you have to do? You have to try to have sex. Now, Meanwhile, I think I gained about 70 pounds with Madison, so I feel like a big, gigantic beach whale. My poor husband, he had no choice because I'm like, I gotta get this baby out of me. So like, let's just have sex, let's just do it. Let's get it over with and uh, let's have this baby. So, you know, whatever, we have sex and nothing. I'm like, so, right at this point, I'm like, oh my God, we're never gonna have this baby. And I, and I remember I, we were watching that show, Third Watch, um, and I was getting dressed, and I'm like, honey, how will I know when my water breaks? And literally two seconds later, my water broke everywhere. I'm panicking. I'm like, I mean, I, I spent a week and a half like waiting for this, and then when it happened, I was like, like a wreck. I was nervous. I, I ran to the bathroom, and I was trying to, I don't know what I was, I was trying to stop the water. I was like, I took all the toilet paper. And so of course then I stopped up the toilet. And my husband's like, what are you doing? Now the toilet stuffed up and I'm panicking and I'm freaking out. And we're like, it's like, we have to go to the hospital. So I'm like taking towels with me and I'm shoving them under me. And we're going into the car. And all I can think of is like, you know, you, you, you want to have the baby, but then when you have it, when, when like you feel like it's coming, it's just, you get so nervous. You, you, I mean, I could just completely panicked. I completely panicked, stuffed up the toilet, I'm walking around with towels, we get to the hospital and oh my god, it was just, I think we had, it was like 48 hours of labor, I had back labor, I, had, I was at a teaching hospital so everyone and their mother was coming in, my legs were open, the whole hospital was coming in to watch my, to see what was going on, checking me, I had students, I had friends, I had relatives, everyone's looking inside seeing what's going on. Finally, finally, they're like, okay, you're almost ready. Keep pushing, keep pushing, and I'm pushing, and I'm crying, and I'm like, give me a C-section. I can't handle this anymore. Finally, the baby comes out, and I made my husband stay down there the whole time to watch the entire thing. So I had to stop for so did he. And he sees this head come out, and there's like red hair on his head, and he's like, Okay, what's, <laughs> how, do, how do we have a redheaded baby? None of us are redheads. Gosh, the first 24 hours, it was exhausting. It was, it was just the most, it's sort of like this out of body experience. But, but of course now 10 years later, you know, you, you, you don't think you can remember. Now that I'm talking about it, I remember everything. And it was just the most exhilarating, crazy, terrifying 24 hours of my life. But of course I wouldn't give it up for anything in the world. And that's my story.